Really drawn out and we're too slow, so we'll try to go. You can go midge faster if you want. I think that tempo was good, okay. so. Parker, how much time we got? One minute? <laughs> One minute. One minute, okay. Right there. Sure.
welcome you to worship this morning. As you're able, please stand up, sing with us, clap, whatever you'd like to do is great. And we're going to do this first song called Yes and Amen.
Good morning, friends. Try this again. There we go. There I am. I'm here. Uh, it's so good to see each and every one of you. Past, my name is Pastor Scott Bonds, the associate pastor here. And I don't know why you're here. I know why I'm here. But I hope it's to seek God, and I hope it's to find connection and community with others. And hopefully today in our time together, you're able to seek and find and experience God's love and peace today in worship. I am thankful for each and every one of you this morning, specifically as we sang that last song. If you know this or don't know this about me, I cannot sing and clap at the same time. I always look like I'm trying to catch a beat or a fly, um, so you all sounded great this morning. As we get started, uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, first is always to remind you about our Connect card. Uh, hopefully you will have gotten one of those in paper and a pen on your way in. You can fill one of those out as much or as little as you want, even if it's just to say, hey, I was here, and drop that off in the basket on your way out. You can also fill that out online, uh, and there's some QR codes you can scan if you want to make it real simple. Promise you we're not going to show up randomly at your house, uh, but um, maybe you want to know about discipleship or small groups or children's ministry or youth ministry or discipleship. That is the way to do it. Uh, as we think about, uh, you know, uh, li our life together and communal life together, uh, I know the staff and uh, Pastor Karen and myself and others, you know, have been continually uh, in awe and appreciation of all the ways in which you give, not just financially, but also uh, through your talents uh, and your time as well. Um, but in specifically, as you think about the way in which you give uh, through your finances, um, a lot of people uh, like to have uh, pre-printed envelopes and have those available. So just want to let you know, if you like to have those envelopes made out for you for the whole year and you want to pick those up, you can either call the church office and talk to our executive assistant, or you can email her at office at kwumc.com, and she'll have those available for you uh, if that's one of the ways in which you like to give. A lot of youth stuff this morning, and that's uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, first and foremost, uh, parents of high schoolers, or soon-to-be high schoolers, so if your student uh, finishes eighth grade at the end of this year, they become a high school student as of the end of their year. Our youth high school mission trip, um, that, and that trip takes place June uh, 5th through the 10th, and it's in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it is a great trip. It is an awesome time. Uh, it is a lot of fun, and our students go and do roofing projects. Parents, no worries. We've not had a student fall off the roof. They're anchored in. It's safe. It's fun. It's a good time. They get to learn about uh, Memphis and its history, uh, as well as what God is doing there. So the cost is subsidized by the church, but it's sitting at $225 per student. Um, there are scholarships available if need be, but I would encourage you to reach out to our student ministry coordinator, Bree, uh, at students at KWUMC or find her at some point uh, when you're in the building. I know they're about halfway full, so don't wait to sign up is what I'm saying this morning. Um, something else that the pastoral staff has, has figured out and has looked at what's happening in the church, not just Kingsway, but the world is that oftentimes when our high school seniors graduate, uh, statistics say we lose about half of them when the, in that transition to college. A lot of them uh, walk away from the church. And so for uh, a few years, one of the things that we have tried to do as a church is to connect with our high school seniors and graduates and to provide opportunities just to connect and have some fun and to talk about the church and to talk about life and talk about faith. So just we have a couple of high school uh, senior uh, celebrations and connections coming up. The first is on February 19th. It's kind of dinner and a movie kind of vibe. Uh, and the second one will be April 8th. Um, and again, that's to be determined. But just want to encourage you, if you are a high school senior, if you are a parent of a high school senior, if you know a high school senior connected to Kingsway or a grandparent of a high school senior, encourage you to let them know about those. Mailers are going out. Text messages will be going out. Just to RSVP, let us know, and we'll be sending the details on that. Lots of good stuff. Always go to our website, kwumc.com, and you can find out more or be watching our weekly emails. Now, as we move into a time of prayer, 
Um, I don't know. Uh, first and foremost, I want to just say, like today, if you don't know, is Scout Sunday in the life of the United Methodist Church, a day in which we recognize and celebrate the contributions of the scouts among us, and not just our current scouts, but former scouts and the way in which they lead in our communities, lead in our church, and lead in the world, um, and the way in which they serve. Um, so scouts all across parts of, uh, of our area and the nation will join and just uh, be part of worship today. And so we recognize and appreciate our scouts and our pack and uh, the troop and all that they do uh, and mean to us as a church. But it's also been a week in the sense of um, that we have experienced a lot of loss and grief in connection to Kingsway this week. And so today, just we lift up the family of Donna Bain at her passing, as well as the family of Walt Zabeck at his passing. His service was a small private service on Saturday uh, here at Kingsway. But it's been a lot. The cold, weather's com- cold weather coming back means our unsheltered friends um, are uh, cold and, and looking and being affected differently, as well as just all the ways in which our community um, continues to, um, to reach out to our unsheltered friends and, and deal with grief and loss, as well as all of the things that continue to happen in our world. So as we pray, we will lift all of these up. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for the gift that is today to be able to join together in this place. Whatever brought us here, God, we're thankful for the opportunity to, to be free from the the elements to be warm, to be around others who are seeking you and seeking to be in community with others. And so, God, there's lots of things on our hearts and lots of things on our mind. We're thankful for our friends and the scouts and and all that they do for our community and our world. But, God, we're also hurting in lots of ways. But specifically, God, we pray today for the family of Donna and Walt at their passing and and the ways in which our community will never be the same without them. And so, God, for their families, we pray for comfort and peace in the days and weeks ahead. So, God, as we continue in worship this morning, as we prepare to to sing some more, as we prepare to, to hear your word proclaimed through Pastor Karen. God, I pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds, that as we seek, we find. As we listen, we grow close. As we listen, we're transformed into your image and empowered to leave this place, to go and be your children, to go and be your hands and your feet, wherever we might find ourselves. So God, we love, you this, we love you all the time. We love you this morning. We want to be in tune with, with your heart and your will, God. So this morning as we pray, we pray the way Jesus, you taught your disciples to pray so long ago when you taught them to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, just to remind you about our children's discipleship hours at, uh, during this time. Kids are always welcome in worship, but if you ever have any questions about children's discipleship, you can reach out to our uh, children's director um, at uh, Lake and Dilde, and she will answer all of your questions. See you. 
Pastor Karen, and it is a joy to see all of you here today. What a lovely reminder of the power of Jesus' name. Today's series is Confronting Conflict. I don't know about you all, but that is not my favorite subject, conflict. So to be reminded that I don't do this on my own, that Jesus silences that fear, um, is a comfort to me today. And I know that there are personalities that are ready to confront. Um, and I give thanks for um, God's blessing on their special gifts as well. In a way, um, today we are talking about gifts and um, the gift that God has created us to be. I start with a reminder that tomorrow is Valentine's Day, if you did not already know. This was originally a Western Christian feast day honoring a martyr named St. Valentine. Now there's a lot of different stories of, of who St. Valentine was and what he did. Um, legends suggest that he used all of his capital, all of his relationship resourcing to help Christians escape harsh Roman prisons. And one time, after healing a prison, prison's guard's daughter, he wrote her a note and signed it, Your Valentine. Now, this history is undoubtedly intriguing compared with the overly commercialized day that it is now. The love we celebrate on Valentine's Day can have a lot of feels. For persons who seek to uh, be in relationship um, with another, there can be um, sadness and uh, frustration as a part of the way in which culture names Valentine's Day. It can make us feel seen or unseen, worthy or unworthy, and however great flowers and chocolate may help us celebrate this love, nothing compares to the worth that we find in God's unconditional love. The world might tell us that um, our worth comes from success, possessions, relationships, that our worth even comes from romance. But the Lord tells us that through baptism, our identity is anchored as God's beloved child. So when we are not sure how we are loved by others, the Lord tells us that simply being and belonging to God is being loved. We are worthy of love because God chose us, each and every one of us, and has claimed each of us as holy and beloved. As God's chosen people, active in Christian living, then we are called to let the world know about this kind of love, about this kind of worth, to let others know God loves you simply that. Um, you are loved because of being known and created by God. This is the way of Christians. We're not forced to love as disciples, but do so because of the alive, the Jesus, present in our world today. From that love, Colossians reminds us that part of love is the peace of Christ. Again, that whole relating to confronting conflict, peace of Christ rules in us as Christians, whether or not we claim that at all times. Everything relationships, decisions, and plans are to be considered in a way of honoring the peace of Christ. So whether it's on your Bible app, on the screen, or in the Bible pew, you can find today's scripture from Colossians 3, the end of verse 11 through 15. Christ is all and in all. 
Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. For the gift of scripture, thanks be to God. Looking at Colossians 3, we learn Apostle Paul, when looking at the example of Christ for our behavior in following the way, we find these qualities and behaviors that Christians cannot get enough of. Are you ready? Compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness, love, harmony, peace, union, unity, thankfulness, wisdom, and praise. These are the characteristics that show the world around us that God is alive, that Jesus is present through us. If in fact we forget that being a disciple is being a devotee or being a follower, Paul reminds us that though sometimes we want to celebrate our own success or power, as disciples we are first disciples of Christ rooted in his love. Everything we do is to represent the true nature, nature and character of our Lord Jesus. That is what is meant to act in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the way. We are representatives of Christ. And the community of Christ represents his living, his incarnate body. We are representative of Jesus' incarnate body. Is there an easier way to say that? I think so. We represent, we embody the one in which we follow. So when you hear about incarnation, the embodiment of. There was a, a formational group that met this past fall in emotionally healthy relationships. Anybody that was a part of that group knows that we were called out when we listen for our own good. To be emotionally healthy in relationships, you must practice incarnational listening. <laughs> Again, incarnational, partnered with hospitality, or listening, or whatever you place there means to embody Jesus in that. Put into practice what Jesus would do. So incarnational listening is to be fully present to the one in which you are listening with God's peace upon you. So I said, we've been called out for listening for our own good. Have, have you ever been listening for your own good? You can appear to be listening when you're mentally checking off your to-do list or preparing your next statement or even getting ready for your comeback zinger to that person, right? As Methodists, yeah, this is my bingo card for you confirmation people. As Methodists, we profess that we strive for perfection. Today, Paul gives us 14 virtues in which to strive for. I don't know about you, but I mean, just sitting down with those 14 can feel like a lot. And some days it feels like I'm in short supply or I don't have the resources to live those out, especially when we find ourselves competing with overwhelming pressures in our life or, or when we have acquiesced to the culture around us and we've just kind of numbed out. But in this series, Confronting Conflict, we can talk about and think about, examine how we stay true to the way 
even in the midst of conflict. Because we are supposed to foster peace in the midst of evil, controversy, and conflict. How do we do it? An obvious way to do that is pray. Pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, we do not do this on our own. With Jesus, fear is silenced. I didn't know how often I prayed Ezekiel 36, 26 when I pray for strength and a change of heart, but I want you to hear this verse. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. After we pray for a new spirit, we can ask God to reveal the ways in which we contribute to conflict. That's right. Sometimes we have a part in the conflict. We can examine how we continue that with repeated patterns that we don't want to let go of and seek to let go of those patterns, we can pray for healing, forgiveness, and strength to live a new life in Christ. And then finally, I mean, we just pray that we can contribute to the peace around us. So when it seems all is lost, maybe God is giving us the peace that the world needs, or even that conversation, as simple as even that conversation of which you were a part. The peace of Christ and the word of Christ give us a place to root ourselves in the midst of conflict and an identity to live out if we disagree, but to do it in love. There's a book, The Anatomy of Peace, Resolving the Heart of Conflict by the Abinger Institute. It is a delightful read that demonstrates a heart of peace in the midst of conflict. The story is about a group of parents who have brought their challenged teens, whether um, with a whole lot of different reasons of why they have strayed or um, the parents uh, have difficulty with them, and have brought them to a wilderness program that promises 100% to change the direction of their lives. As that is happening, the program's leaders are working with the parents to help them discover how they themselves must change if their children are to have any chance at success. The leaders are an Arab named Yusuf and a Jew named Abby who have themselves experienced a transformed relationship. And they teach that we have two ways of being. If we have a heart of peace, we see other people as people with hopes, needs, cares, fears as real to them as ours are to us. And if we have a heart of war, we see other people as objects, tools to be used. We see them as our obstacles. Sometimes we even with the heart of war, see people as irrelevant. And when our hearts are at war, we can't see the other person's point of view. And sometimes, when we're at the heart of war, we provoke hurtful behavior, often the very behaviors that we object to. So through personal stories and observations of the group's dynamics, in this story, the leaders point out how our own negative attitudes and behaviors drive us to justify ourselves by seeing others as worse as they really are. Yusuf points out, a heart at war needs enemies and mistreatment more than it wants peace. I need more than a day dedicated to remembering love to deal with that phrase. A heart at war needs enemies and mistreatment more than it wants peace. 
a heart of peace, a follower of Jesus seeks to break that cycle that escalates conflict and working at the relational level and sees the other person as created in the image of God. Being created in the image of God, we find that as early as Genesis 1, 26 and 27 in the Bible. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You are made in the image of God. You and every person you meet. God's intention for you is goodness and wholeness, freedom and blessing. And God has the same idea of that for every person you meet. In the Anatomy of Peace, they share a choice diagram. In the choice diagram, you start with a sense and your desire. Here being, I begin with my heart at peace. And from there, I have two choices, a heart of peace or a heart of war. If I honor the sense of peace, I begin to see others as I see myself. If it is a heart of war, I begin to treat the other person as an object. A heart of war or a heart of peace? An example might be that imagine you were raised to hate left-handed people. Sorry for those of you with the gift of being left-handed. Imagine with me, my dad's left-handed, I love the left-handed people. But imagine that you were raised to hate left-handed people because 2,000 years ago, a group of left-handed people attacked your family. And one day, you see a man going along, carrying a bag of products with his left arm. And as he's crossing the street, he trips and falls and everything he has falls out of his bag. You have two options. You can have a peaceful heart or a warlike heart. If you see people as inferior or less than human, you will not help them. And your inner voice might tell you, you can't help him because of what your parents taught you. But that's a flawed way of thinking. You should see him as an individual with a heart of peace and help him accordingly. But in times of war, it is difficult to feel compassion for others because we are at such an extreme level of separatedness from them. But when we come down to the level of these are people, we see differently. It's better to have a peace of mind and see others as human beings. This is what a heart of peace looks like treating others as human beings with their own fears and desires. This is what it means to act in the name of the Lord Jesus, who embodied love for each of us, incarnate peace, leading with a heart of peace to those around you. Everything is to be done as those who represent the true nature and character of the Lord Jesus. This is what it means to act in the name of the Lord. This is the way. God, we know that sometimes it can be very confusing because of the way we have feel, felt attacked or the way things change constantly around us and, and we wonder where our security is. And then we stop and realize we're looking to things that aren't you to fill our needs and our love and our peace. 
Might we be renewed in you today? That we give ourselves a, a place of hope and our heart is new so that we may go into the world seeing the way you see others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the love that is among us, we give thanks. That love includes the way we give and share of our talents and gifts. And as Pastor Scott said, we love to see the way in which you do that through volunteering and giving of your financial gifts. And we remind those of you that um, seek to give in person. We have receptacles as you leave each Sunday. You are able to give online to the ministries of the church or or drop it by in person as necessary. But we give thanks to you and thanks to God for the gifts that we have been given. I might just stand up on this last one.
for the spirit of peace that rests upon each of us. May we go forward with the confidence and assurance that we are filled with that peace to share it with others. Amen. From the ashes, from the